So we are with our virtual re reality session. So Hello. Hey. 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 from Simil Semolek. So if you got any question regarding this session, I mean about virtual reality and the other thing, you can ask me through the WhatsApp or Telegram. And in this session, maybe you can ask, well, if you got any questions in your head, you can type in the chat column or we have a, a, a features that call always page and then teachers you can use that or you can just type in the chat column okay so i'll explain about the rules first um, um literally the rules are simple so you need to mute your audio when the other or the tutor speaking it's just just that and if you want to ask question uh, if you get any question like I said earlier you can type in so in our future we are uh, uh, education of course about virtual reality I, 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 I don't know what 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 it uh, what what is in your mind but you can make anything that have a correlation with education anything you can make modules game or anything like that as in simple is the easiest so you can do your own stuff and we have um, eight sessions for our video conference webinar and we got another person for our tutor they come from um, Sindra VR they, they, they are based on the Indonesia and they have but actually do a lot of, of things in virtual reality so they will become um, our tutor for the entire sessions in our virtual reality <coughs> so we got um, eight sessions until 10th of October and until so we will give you a final assignment a final project that you have to make until the December uh, I don't hey check check <laughs> yep so for the first Mr. Andes here, so maybe uh, I think, okay, Mr. Andes, are you ready? I will give the presenter to you and maybe you can share your desktop or your presentation, okay? Okay, hello everyone. Hello everyone, can you hear my voices? Okay.
Sorry? Turn up my microphone volume. Actually, it's 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 already maximum. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, can I start now? Yes, you may. Yes, okay. Okay, so uh, thank you everyone for uh, giving time to learn about the virtual reality. Uh, and thank you Simolek and Masaji to giving me time to present about virtual reality. So. Okay, uh, today uh, I will introduce you about the virtual reality basic introduction before we go to, you know, like uh, virtual reality software, mocap, and, and etc. Okay, uh, the session will be maximum two hours, but I hope that we can finish it in before two hours. So, okay, I will start. Uh, <laughs> With the first, uh, maybe a little bit introduction about me and my company first. Okay, my name is Andes. Uh, you can call me just Andes. So, my background is physics. I study uh, physics education in 2005 in University of Indonesia. And then I start my cine cinematography and fine art uh, at the hobbies. And then go to the movie journey and then in 2011 uh, I start with uh, my first career in uh, laboratory head in one of manufacturer uh, company in Indonesia and then uh, goes to four years uh, until I resign in 2016 and built uh, Jinda virtual reality is my my company that focusing in uh, utilized virtual reality technology and also virtual reality product. And this is my company since 2016. We already uh, did like more than 50 projects in uh, some countries like Indonesia, of course, Japan, India, Russia, Netherlands. Uh, yeah, you can see on the map and we also have the more than 20 media coverage uh, from Japan media, Indonesia media, and in the in the below you can see uh, some of our clients. And if you come from Indonesia, maybe you can understand what is the, I mean, like what company is it? Okay. Uh, besides, I. We are doing uh, VR service businesses for clients, for enterprise. We also uh, making a product. We are also making a product which is uh, we have uh, two separate division. Uh, one is uh, entertainment product and one is uh, edutech product. So this is one of the example that we doing now and we are developing now. So this is uh, called code name Mindful and. This is a multiplayer game. Uh, maybe it can, you know, like giving you guys an inspiration a little bit. Sorry. So it's actually a um, uh, multiplayer VR games that we make.
Yeah, okay. Uh, that's the video that uh, I showed you about the multiplayer VR games that we made. And okay, today our agenda is uh, I will explain about the history of VR technology before we go to basic overview uh, of virtual reality. I will present about the technology concept and the software and the hardware and then uh, after that, after we understand about the overview of virtual reality, uh, we can continue to uh, talk about how to making VR content, the workflow and skill set that you might need, and then goes to the design guidelines. Uh, so we are focusing now for Android-based VR, uh, not for HTC 5, not Oculus Rift, because you know, like the Android-based VR is uh, the most affordable uh devices for visual reality until now and then goes to the study cases just a video about the how uh the top 15 games that have uh, good ui and good ux for visual reality okay before i go to the explain the history about virtual reality um i will explain about the VR, AR, and MR in definition. So, yeah, as we know that uh, now we have uh, new emerging uh, media technology, uh, which is there is three uh, component of it. Uh, one is VR, of course, that we're talking today, and uh, another one is augmented reality and then mixed reality. So as you can see guys in this diagram, uh, VR, AR, and MR, they have uh, differences. So VR, if we talk about VR, we talk about the fully enclosed synthetic experience, whether it's 3D or video or photo or 360, anything. So as long as fully enclosed and we have full synthetic experience with no sense of the real world, we can call it VR. And AR is uh, differences is uh, the real world remains central to the experience. If you talk about AR, we can still see our uh, real environment. And then we can put like uh, 3D or, you know, like 2D UI and everything in, in, in the screen. And mixed reality is uh, combines uh, VR and AR technology into one devices. So it will be more expensive. Uh, sorry, it will be more advanced if if we talk about mixed reality. So now uh, I will brief about uh, the history of VR. So virtual reality technology uh, uh, actually is not new. It's already uh, this technology is been developing since uh, 1950 and 1968 uh, uh, start with the Morton Helix Sensorama and in 1968 it with the Swarov Demicles but this technology I mean like these devices is only you know like for uh, entertainment and academical research purposes so this is a, a video of the Sensorama So as you can see, is it in 1960? <laughs> <laughs>
So there is stereoscopic uh, lenses there. Okay, as you can see there in the in this video, uh, uh, you can see uh, the stereoscopic lenses uh, and also uh, four videos that you can see uh, through that uh, lenses. And you also can see in that video there is uh, some effect like a 4D effect, like wind, uh, vibration, aroma, and and, and etc. So actually, this technology is not quite new. I mean, like. It's it's already developed since uh, 1960, and the term of virtual reality itself it comes in 1987 by Jaron Lanier. Uh, he's the first he's the first uh, person that uh, term I mean like the giving the term of the virtual reality, and he and his team also the first. Uh, that uh, making uh, sorry that made uh, the iPhone as you can see it iPhone is the first VR glasses that have the light wait is wait bagus so this is we are in nineteen eighty seven. And that's the glasses in 1987 that's called iPhone. Yeah, that's the virtual uh, environment. Okay, so after that era, uh, there's come, uh, I call it a uh, 90 era of virtual reality. So it starts with the virtual reality group arcade machines uh, in 1991 and then goes to Sega if you guys know Sega and then in 1995 Nintendo if you guys know Nintendo uh, they uh, had the Nintendo Virtual Boy product so this is the product of the Nintendo I 
Okay, there's uh, Nintendo Virtual Boy that launched in 1995 and goes to the resume of journey and you know like milestones for visual technology itself. As you can see here, I put a cross mark here. We just now uh, start on 2004, 2014. Uh, 2014, there is uh, Oculus VR that come out, and Facebook uh, bought it in two billion US dollar. And four years later, I mean this year, we have uh, so many virtual reality devices. Uh, uh, we just we have more variation uh, from price uh, specs. And etc. So as we can see here, there is PC-based VR, there is console-based VR, and we also have now mobile-based VR. And the new one that already launched this year is standalone with sensors. So it's actually the standalone VR is a solution uh, for bridging this mobile-based VR to the PC-based VR. So the standalone VR uh, also have the uh, sensor base. I mean, like standalone with sensors, and also the standalone without sensors. Okay. So in this learning, uh, in this learning session, we will make uh, we will learn about the how to make VR contents and VR mockup uh, for the mobile basis. So this one is uh, the standalone one. So after we know, know about the history of VR and the simple definition of VR, AR, and MR, now I will go to the basic of the YouTube of it. Okay, so basic overview of virtual reality. If we talk about VR, uh, we want to make VR content. We need to understand uh, as simple as um, we need to understand in simply way how our brain works. Actually, in natural world, our brain is just reacting with the stimulation. I mean, if we, if we, you know, if you poke your friend and then you your friend poke your back, it's a 
you know like it's the one of the simple explanation about how our brain uh, interact i mean how our brain react with the the stimulation so in vr we want to create this natural uh, stimulation using virtual world generator oh, display okay. and then goes and then goes to the sensor organ and then goes to sensor organ and then our brain react to the sense organ and give uh, you know like uh, feedback impulses so what we need to uh, understand before we go into the design this three points like immersive stimulus and interaction is this is the three key point of virtual reality technology so if you want to make the vr you need to understand what immersive is you need to understand who or or how you want to get stimulus to your users and how to interact with the virtual world okay this is the key point of making VR content. Before you decide what content you want to make, you need to first define your target users. Who is your target users? Is it uh, for students? Is it for kids or teenagers? Or, the, or is it for, you know, like grow up adult, like like young adult like me, or, you know, like, of, uh, or uh, more than 40 years old, so you need to define your target users, girls or boys, men or women. And then secondly, you need to define the device benchmark specs. So which device that you want to use? Is it you want to use uh, VR for PCs or you want to use VR for smartphone? And if you want to design VR content for a mobile phone, which mobile phone you, you want to uh, you know, you want to uh, put your game on that. I mean, the benchmark like RAM, processors, GPU, you need to understand that before you decide what content you want to make. And the third is define the input controller, like how simple the controller interaction will be, like, or how complicated it will be. Like, it will affect what, uh, it will affect the content that you want to make. And the skill set, the skill set you need to understand uh, is, of course, 3D because you want to make a 3D environment. Uh, in 3D, you can learn uh, in the, you know, like different uh, learning courses for from CMO, like maybe. So in here, uh, the usual software that uh, developers use is Blender, of course, and 3D Max. And the engine is you can use Unity or Unreal, so it's a uh, matter of choices. In Unity, you need to uh, understand about the C sharp language, uh, and in Unreal, you need to understand about the visual scripting algorithm and uh, and of, uh, also the C plus uh, plus language. And this is the simple workflow there uh, before you uh, making or build the, the VR content. So for simplicity, I make this diagram. So you can see here like input one, input two, input three is the abstract input. I mean like it's a trial error input that you start with your coding. And then from here, you can build a mock-up like mock-up like, like uh, how it will interact with the, your devices and then after that you can go to build the tree and build the UI design at the parallel time I mean like uh, if you have a friend that uh, can doing 3d uh, meanwhile you doing the UI by design it will be uh, good. and then you know you can you can work it parallelly and then you can build after that you just build, build it for any other device that you want for example if you use unity there will be uh, you know like checklist what you want to uh, which device you want to build uh, 
for gear VR or for standalone or for SD device or for Google Cardboard. So now we are focusing in here. We are focusing how to make VR content for Android system. This is the simplest uh, devices. Okay, go to the design guidelines. Uh, VR for Android. So there is five points. Point that you need to understand. That focusing on uh, to design the VR content. First is you need to uh, maintain the comfortability of the users, and then after that. Uh, you need to maintain the UI and UX design. This one is very tricky. Uh, I will explain later. And after that, you can go to the interaction. What interaction in VR devices that you want to build. And you also need to uh, paying attention of resolution and display of the devices and sound. Okay. Let's talk about the comfortability. There is many points that uh, we, we need to maintain. We need to keep up to, you know, to uh, making the VR content that comfortable for everyone, every user that you want. The first is you need to maintain high frame rate. This is important. The consistent 60 FPS or 90 if you if you can develop for SC5, but for Android, the consistent 60 FPS is the minimum for a comfortable VR experience. You cannot go below that. So, if you go below that, the user will be dizzy, and they will, you know, like they will not using your content anymore. And research has sound versus frame rate, and I've seen rendering makes user feel six. That's true because if the frame rate is lower than 60 fps it will be you know like uh, become lagging and brain to you know to get the wrong stimulus and will react with the you know wrong reaction you need to avoid acceleration and the simple things like you need to wait wait a minute okay there's a little bit one step on okay You need to avoid acceleration. So it's important in VR, especially especially for, for Android VR or mobile devices VR that that doesn't have uh, you know a motion sensor or sensor track uh, control or sensor track system. So you need to maintain the uh, movement. I mean, you just. I have uh, two choices. Uh, one is uh, you can make the VR content with constant velocity or teleporting through gaze or click. There's only two options if you want to design uh, VR content for a mobile phone. So keep maintain the constant velocity of users, or you can use teleporting or you know like teleporting through gazing, gazing if you if you gaze to to the some UI or point. Or click. Okay. And then you need to ground user with fixed object. So user generally prefer fixed object to ground them with the experience. And it will help them to you know to reconcile the sensation of movement. So, yeah, it will maintain them to feel still feel immersive in the 3D uh, environment. Maintain focus is also important. Uh, 
So you need to always maintain an experience that is in focus. So please don't uh, do not make the UI or UX experience that's you know like disperse the, the focus of the of the point of view. And the stereoscopic 3D experience are great for adding depth to your app. Yes, definitely. And but having the user's eyes trained from focusing an object too close to far object there are not clean clear sorry can lead to some port so you need to maintain maintain the distance uh, from the uh, from the camera of users and with the UI that you want to design and head tracking head tracking also uh, important you need to put the right head tracking uh, system and you need to yeah that's why because before you uh, develop the VR content. You need to understand what device you want to want to use, what device you want to use. Okay. And the last is everything in 3D space. Uh, please uh, uh, do not uh, just minimize uh, the the splice or animation or, or ui or text that you know like very very big in front of your eyes and make sure all your object and content grounded into the space to be head tracked okay now uh, i want to talk about the ui and ux design for vr uh, as I talked before, that designing UI and UX for VR is tricky. Why? Because in here, if you can see a flat screen, right? Flat screen, like PC, uh, mobile phone, TV, anything, LED screen. So it's all about flat screen. So if we use flat screen, we can put uh, the UI, uh, you know, the UI panel or or, or anything like UI uh, button, something like that, and the UX, it's easy because uh, everything will be in front of your eyes, in front of your users. But if we talk about VR, we have 360 canvas, which is, we can see all around. I mean, we can see, you know, 360 degrees, like in front of you, inside of you, like, next of you, you like behind you like in every area you can put anything there but where to put the ui button and how to design it it's very tricky as you can see here it's if we talk about vr we put the user in this uh spherical uh world like 2d spherical world so presenting information and guiding the user can be a bit trickier but if we do it uh, nicely, it will be rewarding. Uh, it will be like uh, making the experience more immersive. And yeah, it will be optimized the VR technology itself. Okay, so this is the guidelines, the basic guidelines of how to make the UI UX design of your VR. So as you can see in this diagram, this is I have a vertical uh, FOV and this is horizontal horizontal FOV. So make sure the experience is effortless for your users. And from this diagram, you can assuming the user is sitting on a static or non-spinning chair. So assume the users it not move. I mean, they grounded in in the static chair, and then put the VR glasses there, and they they wear VR glasses with the only one hundred pan of view, and can only put the UI button or design in here, like ninety four percent for horizontal space and thirty two percent for vertical space, so. This number you need to keep maintaining, keep remembering when you 
trying to make the VR content. And this one is about a viewable distance. Um, as you can see here in this diagram, the good point is uh, if you put the UI uh, design in this area, like 10 meters from the, uh, the camera, the user camera, so it will be the strong stereoscopic depth perception area. Of course, you can go closer, like 5 meters, like this one is minimum comfortable viewing distance, and further further that uh, you will have that 20 meter maximum if you want to put anything there for interaction so 5 10 20 so 10 is the most convenient way but if you want to get it closer you can but at least no more than uh, sorry no less than 5 meters and if you want to put it further you can go to maximum 20 meters so 20 meters is limit of telescopic depth perception. Okay, now for the Android system, which is cardboard system, you can see here, you can buy a cardboard with a very cheap price. Maybe in Indonesia, you can buy just only uh, $3 or $2 maybe. In cardboard version 2, there is a button here. It's a, a conductor button. It's actually also from cardboard, but, but uh, they uh, like put like a conductor material here. So when you press it, it's the same like you press your um, you press your uh, screen, like mobile screen. And you have also the gay system. So of course, your smartphone needs to be uh, half gyroscope sensors so you need you can use this gauge system to control everything so if you talk about the VR for mobile or VR for Android you need to you just have this button and gauge system so it's simple next resolution and display uh, you need to consider the size of your UI element and text. Don't make it smaller. Don't make it bigger. Just fit. That's why you need to mock up everything first before you before you continue with with the coding or putting all the 3D assets. You need to you know make a level level design with the mock up first. So it need to make because you need to testing testing and testing again. Uh, about the UI and the, and, the, and the buttons and the 3D that you want to make and that you want to put. Then, for example, like small text doesn't not display well in VR. And the last but not least, I mean, the sound is also important in VR. Uh, if you use Unity on or under engine, you can you can choose for example if you use unity you can choose uh, the 3d sounds uh, checklist and in, in, in the unity you can learn it uh, later uh, to make this 3d sound or binary sound is important because uh, in vr you will have the 360 3d environment i mean like spherical environment complete spherical environment that's why you need a complete the binary or at least 3D sound. It will make, uh, you know, like the effect of if if the sound is come from your lap, that will you will you will feel like it come from your lap, and, and vice versa. If it come from your your right side, it will be, you know, you will hear the sound it from your right side, and it correlated strongly with your brain. I mean, like, if you listen something behind you, your brain will be, like, giving reaction, giving instant reaction that you will, like, notice what's happening back. So that's why sound also is very important here. 
Okay, so I hope uh, this uh, guidelines will will help you for the next e-learning development for making VR. And before I uh, finish my presentation, let's watch this videos. This videos is uh, some study cases that I took from YouTube. Uh, this video resume all the best VR content and VR games and you can see in this video how they design their UI and how they design their UX, uh, how they design their user experience.
Okay, that's the some examples of the UI in virtual reality spaces. So yeah, I hope we can learn and we, I hope I can inspire you guys to uh, start thinking and you know what VR content you want to, to make. Okay, that's the end of the presentation. Thank you. If you have any question, please uh, you can ask in chat or yeah. Okay, uh, Mas Aji, I will give it back to you. So I'll wait for maybe five into ten minutes. So if you got any questions, you can type in the comment. And then we will we will see you again at the next session on Wednesday. Twenty is twenty eight of March from then. It's Wednesday. And actually it may be a wise decision if you um Mr. Anders already told you that he will use uh, several of software so i will give you a, a little bit of different questions as well so maybe you will want to download unity or yes unity and blender so if you want to explore anything in this software before we are more deeply into this session so that will be a wise decision so we got a question to the question Um, do we need Android Studio now? Um, okay, got question from Education Wise School Pontiana. How do we need Android Studio? You, um, we actually don't need Android Studio here, so
there is also a question from uh, Nathaniel Juan. Uh, how long does it take to make one VR game, basic one? Well, it's for the basic one. Uh, it depends uh, how many members on your team. If you doing coding and what your friend is doing 3D, maybe it takes uh, three to four days. If you already have, you know, like the, the, the basic uh, coding skills and the basic 3D skills, I think three to four days is enough to make the basic VR games. Um, but if you want to put the more complex uh, UI system or, or, or the, the more complex games, you need at least like two weeks or one month or maybe maybe under three months maybe under three months so so it depends and also question how many applications we need to make the program is uh, as i told like we need uh, 3d software and the game engine software what is the price of a vr box you mean a you mean the Google Cardboard? If you mean the okay, the question from Adam Fastly seven two seven is what is the price of VR box? So well, it's uh have a very much variation. Like if we buy the cardboard one, it might be only cost two or three dollars. It's very very cheap. But if you want to buy the resins one, I mean the plastic one, it might cost around um, 10 to 15 US dollars. So, yeah, it's not quite expensive, but you need at least, the most important is not the headsets for the mobile phone. The most important is the devices. I mean, the, the mobile phone, the specs, the processors, the RAM, uh, RAM memory, and the graphic uh, card of the smartphone itself but the price is you can get for three dollars for the cardboard you can actually uh, for for vr box or vr cardboard you can find in in online stores there is so many many uh, uh vr cardboard in online stores do we need android studio no like uh you can build using the the Unity engine and there's uh, the VR Android SDK there. And from Natal again, if we want hand motion, do we need the controller and how much? Okay, that's a good question. I mean, if you want to make the hand motion for the mobile phone, um, you need you need the controller, yes, but you can not. Uh, you know, I mean, that's not easy to make, to integrate the hand controller uh, with the mobile phone because you also need to integrate the controller with the, the SDK. Uh, the SDK from the controller, you need to integrate with the, with the engine and whatever engine you, you, you used. And how much? I think it also depends uh, what, which controller you want to buy. Uh, I think the easiest way is to try with Bluetooth controller first, but it's not hand motion. If we want to do hand motion, we need to, you know, uh, put the sensor on the device. That's why uh, there is a standalone VR with the sensors, because it will detect your movement and your controller movement. But if you don't have that kind of devices. I think it's kind of a bit hard to, you know, to making the hand controller uh, as good as the standalone VR. So I think if you want to make a mobile VR games or mobile VR content, it's just need gazing system and the button. And the button, you can, you can change the button system in here with the Bluetooth controller. That's the easiest way. And from Julian Fixi, are we now focusing on the VR games or we can build something else that's on the VR concept? Okay, so 
VR is not only for games. We are actually, if we talk about virtual reality, we talk about how to make a 3D world, how to make a 3D environment to be put on the media, to be put on the device that affect the users. Uh, the users feels in there. I mean, the users immerse in the in the three D world or three D environment you make. So it's not only about the game. Uh, you can make the VR content for education. You can make a VR content for tourism. You can make a VR content for healthcare. You can make a VR content for tourism purposes. There's so many things. So many things. And question from Giovanni: What material does Yos does use to make Android VR games? What material does use to make Android VR games? You mean what, what material? What I mean? You mean the 3D materials or? I skip this question because I uh, not fully really understand about what material. I mean, I mean what? What what do you mean about the material? What what thing? What thing? Okay, so from Farah Ahmad from Surabaya. So in this competition, what kind of will we make? We are from our phone or we are from <laughs> So for this competition, uh, please make VR for the mobile phones. VR for Androids, because I believe there's a. Uh, not all of us uh, have the VR for PC, right? So it might be wise if we start with the making VR for mobile phone first, because first, it's easy to afford, it's easy to get, and second, uh, it's easy to make. I mean, like easier to make because you need just you just need the two two type two type of uh, controller interaction, which is click and gaze. At least we need to learn that first before we uh, come up with the VR for PC solution. Is there any other question? Um, he asked me, can we use Unreal Engine in the VR? Sorry? Can, can we use Unreal Engine? Oh, for this competition or yep. for for this competition? Um, well, for me, it's, it, it doesn't matter what. Yeah, we uh, also. I mean, like. Uh, no matter what the software uh, they will use, I mean, like they can use Unity or, or they can use Unreal, yeah. But please, uh, for the competition, uh, we need to we need to maintain the comfortability of the mobile phones uh, VR. So if if someone use Unreal Engine with the high quality, very high quality graphics, right? I mean. Uh, please maintain the frame rate. The frame rate is the first most important in VR mobile. If if we if we give the you know like the high graphic or with the high mass high uh, high quality materials, I'm afraid that it will affect with the lower uh, frame rate. So please keep attention with the frame rate. Need 60 FPS. No, no, no less than 60 FPS. 60 FPS. So it's depend on your optimization. So for a result, at least VR does. So for just please keep in mind that you may use it already. Just, just please keep get a good scan. So I'm just like, okay. about uh, Unity 
Okay. Uh, for the smartphone or devices, uh, at least you need at least you need a smartphone with two gigabytes memory RAM and with gyroscope sensors. That's the most important uh, point for the, the the VR smartphone devices. You need at least minimum, very very minimum. You need two gigabytes. Uh, uh, sorry, you need the smartphone with two gigabytes uh, memory RAM and um, gyroscope sensors, gyroscope accelerometer. That's enough. Sample of what? Can, can you can you that synth of VR we make? Or the the product that uh, that synth of VR made? Or, or or yeah, I think both of us already. Uh -huh. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, this is that's why. Yeah, I showed the mindful one. Yeah, I showed the mindful one. The games. You can you can search. Uh, sorry. Uh, I will chat here. Like Cinta VR. Yeah. Projects product so far. Uh, uh, can find in Okay, the next question is how long does it take to make an education VR such tutorial for something? So again, it depends on how complex the 3D design you will make. If it's uh, just a limbo with the two or three objects, it might be needs one week, not more than that. Uh, but if you want to use a uh, specialized 3D environment with uh, you know many variation colors, like things and that. Something like that is is take to like maybe one month or or, or two months. It depends on the complexity itself. So tutorial for something it's kind of hard to answer, but yeah, the range is within one week to two months. I think it depends depends very dependable of the from the the the, the complexity. Hi, Harry. Yeah, you need the PC, you need the PC or laptop 
for you know making the VR, making VR with Unity or or and making the 3D assets. Or if you want the easy way, you can download all the 3D assets in Unity Asset Store. There is many many 3D assets for VR. You can just download it and then you can use it in Unity. And uh, yeah, and um, yeah, you need a pro- you need a phone, you need a smartphone for the viewer for the VR viewer. Um, yeah, like I said, like uh, you need to to have at least for smartphone is two gigabyte RAM and gyros. So this is the minimum requirement for the devices. Can you recommend to us for specification for free laptop to use? Well, actually, for the PCs or laptops, you need, um, okay, this specs for uh, laptop or PC to make the VR content, at least you have minimum requirement is i5 sorry i5 or If you have eight gigabytes and and for graphic card, you can you can actually you can use a laptop. Okay, so next question from Julian. For example, we already mastered the 3D modeling skill. How much is it that we already have in order to produce the education? Can you give a rough estimation? So, if you already mastered the 3D, it's already, I can say, already 40% of it. 
Question from uh, high high school one query. Um, what is topic of the program? Um, we'll announce at the end of the tutor sessions at for your final project. We'll decide the topic session from worry and this get updated at the similar website or at the sub. Um, we got another questions, Mas Andes. Um, what what, what yep. about the PC specifications for software or for making VR applications? Okay. So the PC specification, uh, I think I already already. Yep. Yep. Yes. I already mentioned about it. Okay. In, in chat chat box. So chat box. okay, I will assume. I will assume again. Uh, the PC specs is uh, minimum is you need uh, at least i5 PC or laptop with the i5 processors or similar than that. If you use AMD or, or whatever, as long as it's similar with the i5 processors, it could be good. And this that, that's the minimum requirement of the the, the, the PC or, or laptops. And uh, minimum you need to have four gigabytes RAM, four gigabytes uh, memory RAM of the of PC or laptop. If you can increase it, if you can increase by eight gigabytes, it will be great. It will be great. It will be help you to make uh, all building and all rendering faster. And for graphic card, uh, I think for very simple content, you can use the internal graphic card of these PCs, but I recommend you find a PC or laptop, the, at least the NVIDIA 
the M series like uh, 840, 8, sorry, 840M uh, series or, or, or similar than that. Mm, if good, if you have the GTX series, but uh, if you only have a GT M series, it's it's enough. My laptop is using like uh, 840 uh, GT series, so I have no problem with uh, creating uh, simple or basic the uh, content. Um, so, so he has recommended some words to use. We already have a discussion about some of the use. So you may want to use Blender for the 3D Maker and Unity. Yes, we'll, we'll use this too in our sessions. But if you want to use other software, that would be fine. Yep. Okay. Yep. September. So yep. I'll see you guys and if you if you have any questions left in your after the session you can ask to me or to this with the WhatsApp group. We'll get to yep. Yes. Yep. So we'll okay, all right. Yeah, thank you. Bye. See you again.